Hello and welcome back to the ministry. So this is going to be a little something different because I usually don't do my words like this, but God gave me an in-depth word and I didn't want to do a short chapter of piece by piece something or other. I wanted to make sure that I got everything I needed to say out in one fell swoop, no matter how long or how short it is. Okay. So we might be here for a minute, but this I am happy to finally say is the word the Lord gave me for this ministry, love, faith, peace, and blessings for 2024. I'm excited about this because the Lord gave me before 2020 ended a word in relation to um, God was changing things. And I might bring in a little bit of what the Lord showed me that uh, a prophetic mentor of mine told me that year I was going to have a word for 2021. If you go to my, I believe it's called And She Arose page, that page has the word, but I believe the playlist on the ministry page that states new season, I think it's the first word. I linked it in that playlist from that year. But today, we're going through what the Lord showed me on the morning of Christmas for what 2024 is. And I'm happy to have it because about a month ahead of time, I asked the Lord, are you going to give me a word for 2024? 24, seeing as we now had the ministry and things were starting to thrive, I wanted to have something for you guys specifically for 2024, especially seeing as he set me up this year in 2023, there had to be something he wanted you guys to know for 2020. Okay. Now, I'm going to go through the notes and let the Lord just give me what he's showing me. Okay. Well, give me wisdom, guidance, direction, grace, favor on how you want this word to be released. So that I may know and I may speak only your will and your desire for this word in this time and in this season. Give me wisdom and understanding and clarity that I may speak only what you desire for me to speak and add nothing nor subtract anything from your will and your word. Okay, let's begin. This word actually... It's interesting. I have wrote a note because I put a placement in my notes. When you are expecting something, it helps to put a placement in expectation for what it is that you're seeking to receive in that spot. Okay. Uh, with that being said, okay, the Lord showed me that I had initially wrote, Lord, is this going to be the title? What I wrote is going to be part of this word, but that wasn't the word. Last night, I was listening to one of my ministers as I was preparing to go to bed. And she was ministering something about Jesus' birthday. And as she was ministering she said one line 
And this is how God speaks to me in a lot of cases. I'll hear somebody say one statement and the Lord will highlight that statement. Highlight it. And when he gives me the go ahead, I'll write that down and then he'll pour into me. That's how a lot of the words I get come to me. Okay. So when he poured, this is the revelation he gave. Get out your pens, get out your paper, get ready. Cause we about to dig in. Okay. Because this is going to be deep. It may not be le that lengthy, but always going to be deep. I need for you to hear me. So we're going to start with, I'm in Malachi. I need to be in Matthew. Matthew. Starting with Matthew 7. Because this is the first part of the note that he gave me. Matthew 7. And it talks about <clears throat> Hold on. It's Matthew 6. I always get those two chapters mixed up. Um he brought me to this particular part that states our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. That is what he wanted me to highlight. But in all actuality, let me see. Is there something from seven that he needs me to give you? Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it will be opened. For everyone who asks him who seeks shall receive. And him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man of you, if his son asks him for bread, would give him a stone? Asks for a fish, would he give him a serpent? If then, who is evil, knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more will the Father in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? Okay. This word right here that I'm about to dig into is about your promise and your promised land. Now, I'm going to tell you this scripture that God is giving me next hold on let me see he gave me one morning when I woke up months ago and it was a sign from him to me about what he was about to do for me in my life but I never gave it to you guys I do not think But he's telling me now I can give this to you. So here we go. Pause. Before I give you the scripture, God had me look up two different scripture versions of the same scripture. And it's funny because when I picked my phone up that I usually look my scriptures up in, it was one chapter away from the chapter that I'm reading. So this was aligned by the Lord. Okay. I am lying to you not. <laughs> so I'm going to read to you 
the NLT version of Isaiah 49 and I think this is the King James version of the Bible that I'm reading out of. He usually doesn't have me do that. It's the revised standard version of the Bible. So, okay, before I do that, I'm going to say this. A lot of us have been in a season where it has felt like we were birthing something over and over and over and over and over again. God would tell us something. Maybe it's just me. He would tell us something. We get the instruction and we would have to fight through the process of pushing that thing out. Some seasons, it was easy to push those things out. We did it back to back to back to back. In other seasons, it was like, this is the biggest breach birth I've ever experienced in my life. What in the world is going on, God? (laughs) And we have been processed through. Ooh, let me take a picture of that. It's a scripture that I'm seeing right now that I want to address. Let me see. I'm gonna put a. I'm gonna use this to put a to put a, a mark in. My phone has a tail on the book, the uh thingy. So I'm gonna just use that. Let me see. And I'm gonna go find this other scripture, which there it is. I may have to look at it, look look it up in this, uh, in my phone, because I don't like the way that that scripture uh, refers to it. I believe it's, the scripture I'm looking for is Romans 1, 27, 28. Um, but I'm going to come back to that. A lot of us have been in a process where God has had us in the midst of birthing something. We've been birthing, we've been pushing we've been toiling we've been trying to get these things done and it seemed like no matter how hard we tried it either we completed it to the level and degree that we could complete it or it always seemed to be that there was one thing missing and that one thing missing God needed to bridge the gap of with your faith that that thing would come to pass and it was seemingly breached. I kept getting, um, I'm a, I'm a spell it D L D E L A Y. But it was because the entry point was breached. If you recall, I did a word earlier this year. Well, now it's next is last year that, uh, I stated was called breach birth is a baby and it shows a chart of how a baby breaches the exit. Okay. I was getting one. I was getting nine nineteen. Okay. Nine nineteen is repairer of the breach. Okay. So I haven't even really gotten to this word yet. Sit back, relax, eat your popcorn. It's, it's about to get good. Um, so there is and has been a breach upon entry into your new season. If you recall, when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, they were being chased by the Pharaoh and his chariots. There was a Red Sea in front. And you had their enemies coming up behind them. But a lot of people tend to, when you're crossing over into the promised land, they always tell that story, but they 
neglect the story of what happened when Joshua brought them into the promised land, which is technically where you're at, where you're going into the promise. You're not living in Egypt now. You're going into the promised land and the promised land means you're leaving the dry desert place that the Lord had placed you in where you couldn't birth anything because the land was dry. Come on, Jesus. He's showing me that there is a scripture that talks about. Jesus, this is a lot of scripture. Hold on. This is how you know God's giving it to me because he's giving me all the scripture right now. Um. Uh, I had this scripture. Hold on. Let me see if I got it in my notes. I keep screenshots in my phone of certain scriptures. Uh, oh, that was Romans 8. Sorry. Not Romans 1. That's why it didn't make no sense. There you go. Romans 8, 27. All right. We're going to come back to that. Bookmark. Had to look up. It was Isaiah 62, 4. No longer will you be called forsaken nor your land anymore be termed desolate. But you shall be called Hitzibah and your land Beulah. In order for that to happen, you have to get married. A lot of you have been in dry, dead places for a long period of time. A lot of things have dried up. Things have dried up so badly that you literally are like, God, you said that I'm supposed to be in a prosperous. This is my new season. A lot of you got scared because in this last ending phase of 2023, Things dried up so bad, but you weren't seeing the manifestation because it was something that was going on in the spirit realm that God was trying to do because he had to get that man ready to marry you because of the fact that he needs to make your land fruitful. A lot of your blessings have been held up because God had to bring that man in at the right time. When you marry this individual, it will be like a deluge, a wave a water way just all the blessings that have been held up for you and him gonna come rushing in because that's what needed to happen you had to get married to each other that's the only thing that's been holding y'all up god showed me a lot of this i'm gonna be honest with you this is literally him showing this to me as we're going through this word. This is total rhema because I had not had this part written in my notes. So coming forth further beyond that, a lot of us have felt like we were birthing or bearing and there was a weight and we could not carry and all of this type of stuff. A lot of us wanted to give up. A lot of us wanted to, I saw a couple of y'all <laughs> in the comments making point. It's like, I'm over it. I'm done. I've, I've seen some of the best of the ones that I listened to even admit they were over it, but they came to their right mind and got themselves together right in the nick of time because they said, mm-mm. I'm not going to let Satan 
win, I'm going to keep my blessings. Because it says here in Romans 8 and 27. Come on. Likewise, the Spirit helps our weaknesses. We were in a season in December of a lot of weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. A lot of you and some of y'all I have suggested to do Tiffany Montgomery's Marriage of the Bride consecration. Go through each and every one of those days. I created a support group and everything for y'all. Blessed be to Jesus. It's still over there. Um, that as we do not pray as we ought to, the spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs, deep and deep words. A lot of you were at a point that you were at a point of exhaustion. When the enemy comes in, what he does is he tries to wear out the saints because he knows that he can't stop y'all blessing from coming to you, but he can get you to speak out your mouth, a word curse, therefore uh, speaking into existence contrary because you're tired, you're weak, you're all of this. This is why I always pray when I feel myself getting tired. Revelations, I believe it's three that states. For I know that you are tired. I've seen what you can do. Watch what I will do for God to come in and say, hey, God, you come in. You take over. Uh, a couple of the ministers that I listen to have been saying God's been telling y'all get ready to rest, rest, rest easy and rest. Now, do you want me to add that in here, Lord? I'm going to say it. Um, okay. What the Lord gave me is he gave me a decree. For some of y'all, you've been waiting on this marriage to come. And he gave me a word while I was listening to Diani Nevs the other day. I forgot to look up what the name of that word was. Hold on. I think I got it in my other phone because I was just looking at it. On YouTube, where did you do? But I'm going to say this. That I got this word. It dropped in my spirit. Funny enough for what I'm about to say. These things are going to come suddenly and unexpected. Isaiah 48 states that. Let me get there. Let me go back to it. Because right up with the arm. Yeah. 48.3, there it is. I'm looking right at it. It's right next to the scripture I was going to say. The former things I have declared of old, they went forth from my mouth and I made them known. And then suddenly I did them and they came to pass. Okay. God is not going to allow this thing to come as you expect it. I'm hearing the scripture because then you will be able to say that it was you that did it. No, he's going to have it come in such a sudden way that you wasn't expecting it, nor from what direction that you could see that it was coming from. You understand what I'm saying? So with that being said, can I say that, Lord? I had a dream of my God or dear spouse. And it was weird because he came an odd way. And that's what God was trying to show me. He showed me this man. <laughs> spider manning it up the side of the apartment building <laughs> and coming over my balcony, which you can't get over in the natural because it's a net, ironically, 
over that balcony. So it's an actual net over the balcony. You can't get there. You can't come over the balcony. And he came over the balcony, through the patio door, and came right to where I was sitting. I said, oh, he's coming an unusual way. Because naturally, you would think that if you're living in whatever kind of domicile that you're living in, they're going to come through the way that most normal people take. (laughs) This is not what he showed me. To say to you, this is not the way it's going to come to you. For he has already shown you, but it was going to happen suddenly. For I declared from old before they came to pass, announce them to you. Least you should not say that your idols had given graven images unto you and they commanded them. See what I just said? Let me look at the other translation because I had the scripture right there. Come on. Of what I just said. Long ago, I told you what was going to happen. Then suddenly I took action. And all my predictions came true. We were not here all this time with all these words that I've released on this channel because I wanted to waste my breath. God has a word for you he gave this to you this is not me okay not at all which therefore means verse 5 of isaiah 48 states that's why i told you what would happen and i told you beforehand i was going to do it then you may never say your idols did it Okay, what am I about to say? I'm going to give you this. I recorded a word that the Lord had me record, but it broke up three times. I'm going to probably still put that word up. It may come up after this is posted. But in it, I stated this. The Lord brought my recollection to a promo of a television show I never watched, never was interested in, and probably only saw the promo once. He reminded me of this promo. It's called The Man Who Fell from the Sky. I'm going to let you just sit on that for about five seconds. I'm going to let that pause sit there. Okay, moving on to the next point. The Lord reminded me of my old girl TV show when I was growing up. He had given me two dreams, okay? In those two dreams is what he showed me. One, in the one dream, I saw the main character who I always call the kingdom wife in this case. And when he showed me this, he showed me this about her. That she was standing in a field, much like this this program. And when she was standing there, the guy, who I always call her kingdom spouse, just dropped from the sky next to her. Which was only a reminding of a recollection of what actually happened in one of the episodes. Her kingdom spouse, I call him. His name is Angel. Okay? Hear me what I'm saying. She, for a lot of you, and I need you to follow me, she had gone through so much turmoil, especially for those of you that are waiting for somebody to reconcile, meaning it's somebody that God has, you know God, you know God, God told you to wait for this individual. This is a person that's supposed to be coming back to you. 
This is a person that is a prodigal from him and is coming back to God. And then he's coming to you. This individual, you were tired. You wanted to move on with your life. For those of you, and I'm I'm a, I'm a stick a pin in that right there and say this. For everybody that sits up there and believes this counterfeit thing, I call it a counterfeit thing, but everybody calls it replacements. Let me tell you something. Listen to me good. Listen to me good right here. Okay. The, what would be the biggest and easiest trick that the enemy could bring to you right now? You're tired. You're weak. You're forlorn. You're exhausted. You don't no longer want to have anything to do with this process. What do you think that the enemy is going to first put in front of your face? He needs you to first come out of agreement. Okay. With the fact that this man is ever going to show up. And he needs to do it with an easy way that you'll believe it. And you know what that easiest way to do so? He will bring people that you trust. Prophetic leaders. People that also talk about kingdom marriage. And they'll start talking to you about the replacement. Don't you, don't you dare fall up for the replacement right now. Because what the enemy wants you to do is to come into agreement with the replacement. <laughs> okay. Because if you come into agreement that there is a replacement, he can send in a counterfeit. You see how that works? <laughs> and then you won't sit up there like, well, God sent me a replacement. And that was Satan entering into the picture. Because as long as you're in agreement with God's way that God's ordained person is going to come to you. That replacement or counterfeit can't weasel his way in. I was listening to a word this morning from Wisdom Speaks and she was talking about the fact just before the real thing come, a counterfeit come. How's the easiest way to get you all off track and mess you up? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I had three separate dreams at three different points in time and Dana Ray just released a word okay the enemy is trying to set you up now that she was talking about was talking about the fact that the enemy trying to wait till you get where you're going and then publicly embarrass you but what the lord showed me in the dreams was that what the enemy was trying to do was set up situations in my dream realm that made me look like if my spouse came to me, then he's on one side of the glass. I'm on the opposite side of the glass and I'm set up. Meaning I wake in the dream realm in a compromising position. I don't know how I got there. I don't know to what capacity caused me to be in this situation. But it's to make your God ordained spouse think that you didn't wait for them. Okay. Because the enemy is desperate to keep this individual away from you. I had three separate dreams. Three. One where the enemy tried to coax me with a familiar spirit that looked just like my ex. To get me to come and go with him. Second, that I had a dream that I woke up in the dream state. And I... I was already in this person's bed and I'm sitting up there like, I didn't agree to this. How did I get here? And I look up who's sitting, standing at the end of my bed, but my God ordained spouse looking disappointed, hurt and broken hearted. Three had another dream. I knew I was under witchcraft because I woke up in the dream heavy. I felt the spiritual witchcraft in the dream. And I could barely get up, open my mouth, or say anything. And I was laying on some guy. I'm like, who the heck is this dude? I'm going to tell you exactly who it is. It was the guy. <laughs> Any of y'all ever remember the, the Janet Jackson video? Um, it's all for you. You remember the cute little guy in that video? It was him. I was like, well, how did this dude get my dream? And then I look up on the opposite side of the glass. I see this dude approaching me. He got on a red and black hoodie. And he takes off the hoodie and it's my kingdom spouse looking disappointed and angry. 
And I'm still trying to get my bearings because I'm under the influence of witchcraft. This was, none of this was supposed to be part of the work, but it's important for some of y'all. <laughs> the enemy has been setting to set you up. Don't you dare come into agreement with that uh, replacement thing. Because that's what the enemy wants right now. And he will use bewitchment through people you trust. I was hearing people, uh, within it, what is it? Uh, middle of the year, early part of the year. They was, they was going all left with their words, talking about, uh, oh, God thinks it's okay for you to do, uh, what is it? Some people were talking about masturbation and all this type of stuff. And people that know the word of God understand that masturbation is coming into agreement with a spirit spouse. Excuse me. Hell no. <laughs> because what the enemy wants is he wants you to come into agreement to either have sex with something in your dream to come into agreement, spiritual covenanted agreement so that you will sleep with it in the spirit till that thing has entry point that it can come into your natural life. You better go into the spirit realm and cut it off. If you think of it, you thought of it, or you remember having a dream, you better start praying against it. In the name of Jesus, break it at every area. Uh, Tiffany Montgomery had a prayer. She said, um, is a scripture that talks about what's the word um jeremiah 29 11 for god's ways are not your ways for god's thoughts are not your thoughts so if god sent this into your dream as a warning then you allow god to express what he was trying to show you and then you fight against it how he chooses to tell you to fight against it but if god did not give it to you you go in there and you start breaking every bewitchment covenant you go in there and start breaking every dream covenant you go in there and you start breaking every uh spiritual word curse that the enemy is trying to send through dreams break up the bewitchment of a message that was sent in your dream realm and then you go in and that you have god go forth and destroy it like he destroyed sodom and gomorrah because you come fully and completely out out of alignment and agreement with that foolery okay i can't tell you how many times i had to pray that okay okay moving on can we get back to the the cornerstone of this word all right guy falls from sky coming back to this i was expressing that that scene in that episode of buffy um the character and i'm gonna give you a little bit of uh an unknown fact buffy the name is short they always used to say this uh, and they mentioned it in one of the episodes or they mentioned it in one of the books about the show that her actual name was a shortened version of Elizabeth. Who was Elizabeth in the Bible? Elizabeth was the one that went before Mary that got pregnant first. And when Mary met her, what did Mary do? She caused her baby to leap. Okay. I'm going to do an entire teaching on why the Lord uses that TV show. Cause I'm sure there are some people that want to say, Oh my God, there's so many demons. There's a reason he uses that show with me. Okay. And he gave me a full revelation. I need to go find it anyway. Um, coming back to that. Buffy walked into the last location that she saw that man at, she took the ring. Some of you, these people have given you something. It was a gift. It was a whatever it was. And because they are betrothed to marry you, you have something. And some of you do. But for some of you, it just represents the ring of the two of you being intertwined together to be married. She took the ring that he gave her on her birthday, 
where they did the equivalent of uh, eloping is pretty much what they did. The equivalent of where he declared his feelings towards her and gave her her ring on her birthday. She took that very ring he gave her, took it back to the last place she saw him. Okay. Put it on the ground, left it there. A lot of you, the reason you have not received your blessing in marriage is because you were looking at it too hard. God needed you to rest and separate yourself from it. One of the things that Tiffany Montgomery says in the year of the bride fast is that you had to release it back to God. If it was from God, God was going to release it to you, but he needed to do the work in it, in that person, in you to make sure that both of you were ready to be able to receive each other. But that meant you had to put it down. She had to put that ring back down on the ground. When she put the ring on the ground, she walked away, walked out and left it. When she left it, guess what? Bro come falling from the sky. I did not stutter. I did not. He fell from the sky. God is about to do this suddenly. Okay. He is preparing to push you into your promised land. But he's doing that by giving you an instruction beforehand. This is the instruction he gave in the word. And I'm going to read both versions of it to you. I'm going to do the one in the Bible and then I'm going to do the NLT because it's easier to understand afterwards. So this is what it says. Listen to me. Oh, coastlands and hearken your people from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named me. He made my mouth like a shaped, a sharp sword uh, in the shadow of his hand. He hid me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver. He hid me away and he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will glorify. But I said, I have labored in vain. Some of y'all have felt like that. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. And some of your spouses have felt like that. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with God. And now the Lord says, who formed me from my womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and the Israel might be gathered to him for I am honored in the eye of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He said, it is to light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up tribes of Jacob and to restore preserved of Israel. I will give you light to the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the redeemer of Israel and his holy one, to one deeply despised, abhor by the nations, the servant, the rulers, the king, shall see and arise princes, and they shall, what is it, prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant 
to the people to establish the land to apportion the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come forth to those who are in darkness, appear they shall feed along the way on all bare heights shall there be pasture they shall not hunger or thirst neither scorching wind nor sun shall smitten them for he who has pity on them will lead them by the spring of water will guide them and I will make all my mountains a way and my highways shall be risen up lo these shall come from afar and lo these from the north and from the west and these from the land of Green. I sing for joy O heavens exalt O earth break forth O mountains in singing for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her suckling child and she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have graven you the palms of my hands and your walls are continually before me. Your builders outstrapped your destroyers and those who laid you wasting go forth from you. Lift up your eyes around and see they all gather. They come to you as I live and say the Lord you shall put them all on as an ornament you shall bind them on as a bride does come on now surely your waste and your desolate places and your devastated lands surely now you will be too narrow for the inhabit inhabitants and those who swallow you up will be far away the children born in the time of your bereavement will yet say in your ear the place is too narrow for me make room for me to dwell in then you will say in your heart who has borne me these, I will be reeve and barren, exalted and put away. But who has brought up these? Behold, I will left alone. Whence then have these come? Thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand on the nation and rise up my single signal to the people. And they shall bring your sons to their bosom and their daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens nursing mothers. And with their faces to the ground, they shall bow down to you and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who wait for me shall not be put to shame can they pray and be taken from the mighty or captives of the tyrants be rescued surely thus say the lord then the captives of the mighty shall be taken and the prey of the tyrants rescued I will contend with those who contend with you and I will save your children and I will make your oppressor eat their own flesh. That just sounds <laughs> And they shall be drunk with their own blood as with 
wine. Then all flesh shall know that I am the Lord, your Savior, and your Redeemer, and the Mighty One of Jacob. I may read the NLT version towards the end when I read Deuteronomy. Getting further into this word. That was the decree that the Lord has made. He sees what you've had to go through. He understands what you've had to go through. And he's about to bless you. Tiffany Montgomery released Covered by God at the end of the year. And her Covered by God was called God is sending in the re reinforcements. Okay. Let it be known. The enemy has tried to play games. He's tried to reroute. He's tried to delay and do all this kind of stuff to keep your blessings from coming to you. And I've gotten multiple confirmations that they're being rerouted back to where they were supposed to be. But God had to let it be that way because he had an appointed time for it to arrive. Okay. But with that being said, you in the process are birthing while being birthed. The Lord showed me Jesus after his birth. Okay. And this is what he showed me in relation to Jesus after his birth. And I need you to track with me right now. What did I just explain to you? I just explained to you your kingdom spouse coming. I just explained to you, you coming into marriage. And now we're talking about what you're about to birth. Okay. See the order. God has an order to all things and he had to make sure that the order was followed. All right. You have been pregnant with God's plan. You have done the work. If you've been doing the work, you know the work that which you have been doing. You know what he's put on your heart, your mind, your spirit, which you were supposed to work on, how you were supposed to work on it, and to what capacity it needed to be completed. Okay? God, then therefore, just as it's stated, go listen to the audio book, by uh, Derek Prince called God is your matchmaker. In the first part, he makes the point of saying this, that that man ain't had nothing to do with this process. God didn't have anything to do with inquiring to him. Oh, you want me, sir, you want, you want me? I'm going to go get somebody for you. What you want her to look like? How she's supposed to? No. Go ahead. And he's like, no, you won't marry who I tell you to marry. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I said in the word recently that I just uh posted a couple days back that God has an ordained order. They can follow it or they can not follow it. But if they choose to not follow it, they going to end up in a world of hurt because the direction that they choose to go a way that seems right to a man, the end thereof is death. Either they going to spiritually die. And that's what a lot of these counterfeits were trying to do to destroy them spiritually by luring them to into rebellion, operating into the eight levels of rebellion. And then Leading them into coming into agreement with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Therefore, completely removing, you can't remove his salvation, but completely coming out of agreement with God's will. So therefore, God would have to be obligated to remove his hand from them. That's, that's what the enemy's been trying to do. That's what the movie, I Think I Love My Wife, was about. Okay? You see the order we've been going in? I've been teaching you something here. God showed it to me in this order. I've not seen anybody else do this. That's why my ministry is different. So with that being said, come on now. We're going to keep on going here. God brought the man to you. Joseph was to come to Mary and they were to get married. 
he didn't know anything about what God did with her in the pregnancy. God did, didn't particularly tell that man what he put on your heart to build for him. He made you pregnant with this purpose that he gave you. But he didn't particularly tell that man. But he did show that man you were the one he needed to hook up with. Because remember the word I gave you. He packaged you in such a way that he couldn't see what your value was. Because you were thoroughly wrapped up. And some of y'all was wrapped in a, a brown paper bag. And it wasn't designed as a designer brown paper bag. You were wrapped up in straight brown paper bag. Uh, I'm going to hand this to you and you're just going to have to trust, <laughs> sir. <laughs> that what's inside of there is valuable to you. While the counterfeit was coming in all their vanity and glory and pride. Dressed in everything that attracted him. And he's looking at the brown paper bag wrapped up in newspaper. And this woman and he had to choose between what looked good to his eyes and what did not. And that was where trust and faith came in. Because remember, Joseph wanted to put Mary away. Because he was looking, I'm sure there are people that were in Joseph's ears saying, you sure, 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 what have you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She pregnant by the Holy Spirit, I, yeah. <laughs> Some of your God are dang spouses because they did not know what to do with the information as God started to show them you just like he showed you them. They didn't know what to do with the information because he had, they weren't used to him speaking the way that he was speaking to them about you. So he started talking and running his daggone mouth to the wrong folks. I'm reminded of what uh, Tiffany Montgomery said, that they were going to the wrong authority and these people did not have the right jurisdiction to give him any advice about what God was showing him. Okay? And what they being said. They were telling the enemy that was operating and moving through the people that they were associated with exactly what God was planning. Because <laughs> they didn't understand what they were being told. And those people tried to get them to come into agreement with rebellion by therefore coming into agreement with witchcraft, therefore coming into agreement with soothsayers, psychics, and what have you, to try to help them figure out what God was trying to say. Go back and watch my word that I did. I think it's 10 to 15 parts. I think it's 13 on Deja Vu. And with that being said, these men had to come into agreement to understanding where they were and what they were seeing was not what God was trying to say and that the people were leading them in the wrong direction. And that they needed to come into realization that they needed to come and help you. That's a lengthy word. Go over there and watch it if you haven't watched it yet. It's in its own playlist. Okay. Next. Um, God gave them a vision. The man had to be convinced. Joseph had to be put to sleep. And when he was put to sleep, that's when the revelation came of what God was actually showing him. Now the Lord is bringing me back to three, three, I think I did three videos on this. I did a word called crowning to be crowned, I think it was. And then I did a second word that I talked about the proposal is your graduation. And I even did a review of the episode in four parts of graduation day from the TV show I watch. And God gave me a major revelation in that. Your proposal is your graduation. A proposal, come on, let's do the, do the research. What is a proposal? As stated 
in the world. Definition of per pose. A proposal is a deed, a contract, and a conversation. A planned suggestion, specifically a formal or written one, put forward for consideration or discussion by others. Proposal for majority of highways, so on and so forth. That's the example. An offering of marriage. Okay. God had specific inheritances attached to the proposal of your husband to you. Okay. They may not have wanted to put her away until God showed your spouse. Why? He was pointing at you because it's something attached to you spiritually that they had no understanding of. Stephanie P. talks about this a lot, that they had to see what was on you in order to understand. Now, I'm not making promises, but somebody wrote in my comments, they want me to do a review of the princess and the frog. I'm not making promises. I will have to see when I have time, okay? If I can do it, because I have watched that movie and it does line up with this. Because remember, the prince in that movie, because I've seen it before, he tried to finagle to manipulate. This is how he ended up getting hooked up with the, the voodoo man to get some type of a blessing. And he knew that Tiana was connected to him getting that blessing. Some of your spouses due to the fact that the people that they had in their ear may have gotten wisdom from alternate sources that when they found out the information about what was attached to you, they opened and ran their mouth. I'm just saying. And when they ran him off to the wrong person, that person was talking about alternative ways, just like in the princess and the frog that were not of God that they could weasel and or potentially manipulate to get the inheritance on you, which couldn't be done until they did it God's way. Because the enemy was trying to get them to come into agreement with rebellion, that if they came into agreement with rebellion, God wasn't going to give it to them anyway. And these are the other things that have been holding you, you and this person apart. <laughs> okay. So... They had spoken to the wrong people that didn't have the right jurisdiction. And the enemy was monitoring. When I tell you monitoring spirits, oh, the monitoring spirits. And I've seen two and three videos on monitoring spirits. And if I told you the attack of monitoring that I had. Waiting on this promise. <laughs> Most recently. You would be like, oh, my God. How did you go through that? Uh-huh. <laughs> but we ain't trying to give the devil credit for what he did. But understand, spiritually, a monitoring spirit can be a bug. I'm going to leave it right there. They may have desired for your spouse to put you away. Okay? Meaning... Not to come near you and to do everything that was going to literally put them out of alignment for them to be able to receive the blessing that was on you. Okay. But God had to give them wisdom, knowledge, clarity, and understanding. I remember when I was praying for my spouse one particular day, I started praying that over him and I got confirmation it worked that 
It's that power of understanding. I was reading the book, uh, Unlocking Wealth and Prosperity. It's in my book, Audible books that are on my own phone. And one of the principles in that book, it talks about clarity, wisdom, and knowledge give you power in order to what? Gain wealth. All right. With that being said, this wisdom and understanding was necessary for this man to gain understanding that the things that God was about to give him and you, there's a blessing in that. And it's the power of the two of you coming together in union with the clarity of potentially the knowledge. And I keep being reminded of a quote that a, a, a mentor of mine gave me that when you take a woman that has a plan and a man that knows how to execute, you got a dangerous combination. The knowledge is coming from you, but the wisdom is coming from him and the clarity is coming from God. For the three strand cord is not easily broken and together you are the power. <laughs> okay. Thank you, God, for that. I did not know that. God just, God just dropped that on me <laughs> while I was, all right. <laughs> so God gave them the vision that is going to make the impact on your marriage and the life that you are going to carry and including, and this is something else he showed me, that your children, what you are about to build in the coming years ain't for you. Now, I've heard a lot of ministers say, oh, it's not for you. It's for the next generation. No, it's not for you. What you are building is the framework that your children are going to carry when it's time for you to hand the baton over to them. And it's funny, Tiffany Montgomery was just talking about handing the, the baton over in her recent word. And she was vilifiedly angry at, 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 uh, an instruction God gave her that the people did not listen to. Mm, that was bad. I felt like I was getting chewed out. I wasn't even there. <laughs> um, therefore, your husband is taking on the responsibility to help you birth what God's given you. Because God gave you a bunch of plans. And your husband, Stephanie P. released a word about a year to a year and a half ago called your husband is rebranding. And I was like, what? And it came across my feed because I was looking through her words a few mornings back. And it came across me because I something I saw. And I was like, wait a minute. And in that word, she talked about he's personally adjusting whatever it was that he was doing so that he can make room to be able to fit whatever it is that God's told him that he's supposed to help you with in order to take responsibility for you so that together he can help you birth what it is that God is showing you. God gave me a vision of being in a delivery room. He gave this to me months ago. And in it. I was. Pushing out a baby. But my husband wasn't there at the moment. But he came up. As I pushed the child out. And. After that first child came out. He came up. Seeing and we were ogling over the first baby. But there was more to come. And that's when he came to support me as a husband will do when you're in labor to help you go through the process of pushing that baby out because it was another child to come. So it's something that you had to birth because remember, you're birthing while birthing. You're birth, you are birthing while being birthed. 
So whatever it is that God was trying to birth out of you, he had to do that with you in the dry place as he was birthing you into your promised land. Okay. And these things that he was trying to put in you to be birthed in the promised land. Okay. He's already given that to you. Next. I was given wisdom when I was listening to one of the ministers. Joseph could not touch her until after she gave birth and healed from having Jesus. Some of your spouses, he going to have to put up whatever it was he was doing. <laughs> you may be sitting there thinking, oh, whatever my husband's doing, I'm going to help him. God has told that man. She's not to help you. She's not to do anything until what I need done is done. <laughs> then y'all can work on the next thing. Okay. He cannot have you working on his stuff until God's stuff is taken care of. You see where that problem is? It's one, 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 one on this video. I can't make it up. Transition. Meaning, he had to put down everything he planned to birth in this season in order to help birth what God needs birthed. Okay? So he is going to come in and he is going to marry you. Okay? But, in you trying to birth what God is going to have you birth, you are going to see a manifestation that there may be a need for things to be moved, adjusted, and operated in faith. One of my mentors operates like this often. She will move in such a way that she'll get an instruction and she'll just go. And she'll figure out. If she ain't got the money for it, she'll make it in the process. She'll keep on moving. She'll keep, keep on going. And it's because of the amount of faith that she has that as they're going, things are going to come along. Uh, Dr. Whitaker says it this way. If it's God vision, it's God provision. And if you're moving in the right direction, when you get there, it's going to be there. Recall the scripture in the Bible that talks about um, when God healed. I believe he healed a series of people. And he sent this grouping of people to go ahead, but only two came back or one came back. And he said, what happened to the other people that I healed? And, and he said, he told them, go, you are healed. Okay. But only one came, one or few came back to thank him for the healing. Okay. You... One, your spouse has been healed, number one. Two, God is going to secure a place for you in the process. You may have to do a little bit of moving, maneuvering. You may see in the natural that you may be moving around a lot as you're preparing to birth this thing, to keep it out of the hands, the eyes, and the eye gates of the wrong people, okay? Because people are going to be watching you, which reminds me of Dana Ray's word that, just came out about offense. Is it offense? I think so. That she literally was talking about in her word, and I'm going to insert this here, that the enemy knows. I've had experience like this happen to me, so I know what she's talking about is true. What the enemy will do is he will try to set you up in a circumstance that in your moment of weakness, that you will take the bait and they will use that bait to completely collapse what God has put on you to be done. And nobody will be able to help you. I had a situation that occurred where I was helping a woman. Me and this woman, I knew her from the church that I was in when I was in New York. And this individual invited me to her 
room because she had a room, not an apartment. But her apart, her little room was a mess. And she said, I need you to help me. And this was an older woman. So I'm like, okay. So I helped her straighten out everything in her apartment. Okay. The last time I went to see her, I had two sets of gloves. One of the gloves I laid on the table and I left that day, but I had a thicker pair of gloves that I was carrying with me. In my mind, I said to myself, I'm not going to go back and try to see if I can get those back. I'm just going to go. I'll see her on whatever day. Because I knew I was about to go into a consecration anyway, so I wasn't even thinking about her no way. Blessed be to God that I did that consecration. Because why? The day I came out of that consecration, I was set up. I don't know who this is for. But the day I came out of that consecration, I was set up. When I went to see her that morning to see if I could get my gloves back from her, that following Monday, she wasn't there. And I heard the Lord say in my ear that morning, she's going to come find you. I said, what? Well, why? <laughs> and blessed be to God, she came and she found me. She sat next to me in the church pew that morning and accused me of robbing her whole apartment. I had not seen her since the day I walked out and left my gloves on the desk. <laughs> she said, you stole everything and blah, blah, blah. She was Oh, and she was about to go off. We ended up going in the back of the church, talking to one of the other pastors. The pastor said, just sit down, finish the service. We'll talk about this afterwards. When I tell you this woman rose all hell, blessed be to God, she didn't raise it while the rest of the congregation was in there. It would have made me look. This is how I knew God was involved in the way that this transpired. Because if this was not God, that woman would have went off while everybody was because people were coming in that morning for the service. She went and she sat still the whole service and didn't say a daggone thing to me. I'm listening to the service and even the word that was spoken that morning, though my mind was in turmoil trying to figure out what the heck is she talking about? I robbed her apartment. But the, even the word that was spoken that morning, the man was sitting up there talking about forgiveness and don't take all on your, your brother and all this kind of stuff. We get up and we go to the back of the, 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 the church after the service ends. It's me, an assistant named Esther, wink, wink, and the pastor that was over that service that day. We went and talked to him. She starts screaming bloody murder about the fact that I done robbed her apartment and this, that, and the other. She's accusing me of everything under the sun. And when I tell you... <laughs> I'm standing there like, oh my God, and blessed be to Jesus. I've been going to that church long enough. I invited her to that church. She came on her own accord from another church we were having breakfast at. And I invited her because I saw her situation and wanted to bless her. When I tell you, this woman rose hell that morning, but you know why she rose hell? I was about to be blessed, and that's why she rose all hell that morning. This woman makes all kinds of accusation, and in the midst of it, God was blessing me because one, the minister didn't believe anything that she was saying. He said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. She's been going here long enough. I don't believe it. He said it under his breath, but it was enough that I could hear it, though I was sitting there in turmoil, having myself up fit that morning <laughs> I've told this story before and the pastor's assistant named Esther follow me turned around and said I do not believe she did this not by any means by whatsoever the woman goes and she stands out in the hallway I'm having a conniption fit and Esther says something before she walks into the other room. She says, I want you to pray on that. And I said, and then it dawned on me. I'm 
a prayer warrior. What the heck am I doing crying about this? I went over to that altar and I hit it with spit fire. When I tell you I paced that floor over that entire situation, when I tell you that woman got up from in the hallway, walked to the entrance door when I started to pray hard and she looked me in the face and ran out the back door. I lie to you not. <laughs> the next woman that came into that church came to me, sat next to me. We talked and this woman blessed me with $60 that day. Half of it went to my tithe that morning. The enemy is not playing in this season. So you have to be cautious of who you're telling, who you're talking to, and who and how things are set up. Because the people that are going to come in are going to come with words as smooth as silk. I'm being reminded of a scripture. Which scripture is that, God? I think it's, is it Isaiah 55? Hold on. Because I was just looking at 55. Hold on. Or is it Psalm 55? I think it's Psalm 55. Because it talks about people with words as smooth as butter. And this wasn't even part of the word. So this must be for somebody. <laughs> I'm just flowing with the Lord. Okay. Okay, here it is. Psalm 55 20. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. These people will come as if they are your friends and have covenant, have broken bread with you, and they will come with filthy lies. False flatteries, false admonishments, false honor in order to get close to you as monitoring spirits in order to speak words as smooth as butter. Yet war was on their hearts. His words were softer than oil and they were drawn swords. These individuals will come in to set you up into particular precarious situations. Right in the process of you preparing to birth out what God has given you. Remember, when Jesus was being prepared to be born, Herod had an edict out in order to kill all of the male children. Resembles what happened to Moses. He was looking for the star that was going to tell him. Tiffany Montgomery's word, uh, God sending the enforcements. Uh, Pastor James Solomon talked about the fact that God is revealing your star to the people that you are anointed to come into alignment with. Uh, my mentor a few months ago released a word that talked about God is going to send people much like when the lame man couldn't get into the church. There were four of his friends that lifted him up. And made a concerted effort to get him before Jesus, even if they had to drop him in through the roof. There are people that are coming and it literally says on this phone, one, two, three, four, five. That will make sure you get to where you need to go in front of who you need to get to because the enemy has held you up way too daggone long. So God's sending them to you. And I'm going to even insert this. Dr. Whitaker said on her Christmas Eve word that God was going to send people to you. They're going to knock on your door. They're going to bless you. They're going to be around. They just going it's going to be blessings on blessings upon blessings. Because they got to make a concerted effort because they done, this devil has held you up way too long. God sending the enforcements to make sure that star in the sky that gave the uh, magi three men wise men the knowledge that Jesus had been born when you get to 
where you're going. I need you to hear this because now I think I understand what God was trying to say. When you get to the promised land, the Jezebelic spirit always does this. He either hits you before you leave or after you get to where you're going. What the attempt is, listen to me carefully, is this. That you're going to get to where you're supposed to be, your promised land, where you're supposed to be birthed into, okay? I saw two warnings. Trust and Obedience Ministry did a word almost a year ago talking about beware of your spouse's siblings. I said, what? Then Stephanie P. talked about this as well. That because of the curses that were instilled in your spouse's bloodline, you and your spouse are out of alignment with those blood bought curses. They family may not be just yet. So you got to be careful of the people you're associating yourself with in either family, meaning him to your family, you to his family, because these individuals will try to get you to come back into alignment. Remember what we just learned in the, um, I think I love my wife, the eight levels of rebellion and then pride, lust, okay, by bewitchment, giving you messages that will lead you into coming into agreement with things that God did not say so that they can set you up. That before, because some of y'all, you may not get married, married first. You may elope. And then some of you, after you've gotten married, there's going to be a transitionary period that as you're planning your wedding wedding, this is when I did a word on this. And it's all coming together now. You're going to get married. Some of you are going to get married. You're going to elope. It's going to be that quick. And when that happens, you're going to get pregnant. But you're already married. But the rest of the world will see. Wait, he knocked her up. And they're not married. And y'all is planning a wedding. So you have to choose to whether you're going to be rushed by a shotgun wedding or you're going to plan your wedding how you choose to plan it I did a review on the movie Breaking Dawn remember if you haven't seen it it's a playlist in the playlists for Breaking Dawn it's major revelation I can't go into all that revelation right now go watch that I did a short review on an old western that my dad was watching one day where the girl was pregnant at the wedding. You will either be one of two things. You're going to be pregnant at your wedding. Because y'all going to have a wedding within a few months. Or you're going to go into hiding for a period. You're going to have them babies. And then you're going to have your actual wedding after that. The wedding wedding but there's going to be a physical manifestation that just as Mary was pregnant when she married Joseph you very well might be pregnant but you're gonna be pregnant with your spouse's baby <laughs> because the physical wedding that ceremony that they are looking for the world is gonna be looking for the ceremony God, remember the proposal, the proposal is a written contract, the contractual agreement of y'all signing a marriage license for an elopement that can be done that quick. That's going to be taken care of. But the physical manifestation of an actual wedding. That may take time, but you will be married when you get pregnant, but the rest of the world might not think that. You understand what I'm saying? I said this once before. But meanwhile, I'm reminded of a word that Esther's way gave. It was a short word. Fire, fire. This is not a false alarm. Congratulations. 
because you're getting married. Okay. In the midst of you getting married, going through all of this process, planning your actual wedding, doing what God's told y'all to do. All of this is happening all at once. And I remember that there were Amos 9 and 13. God, everywhere you look, blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Everywhere you look, there's blessings. Yeah. I've been seeing the title for the film everywhere, all at the same time. You're about to see. All of the things that you've been praying for culminate all at the same time is a deluge of everything coming together as a culmination all at once. But the way the rest of the world's going to see it, that don't make sense. You got married. Is this a shotgun wedding? What in the world? Is she pregnant? You may even still have a little bit of residual weight on you. Or you may just have that thickness after you done gave birth to your kids. Whatever it is. But... People don't think you did this all out of order. No, you didn't. You did it the way God told y'all to do it. <laughs> and people going to be like, well, and this, and they going to want to say stuff. Let me tell you something. I need you to start praying right now in the name of Jesus. That every word curse, every form of bewitch it, bewitchment, every uh, form of false messaging Situation, circumstance, and word curse that anyone would speak over your marriage, as according to the scripture in what is it, Lord? It's the scripture in the word that talks about um when Abraham told the king. And he didn't tell the king. God told the king that he was in trouble because he was trying. He was ogling over Abraham's wife. For what these individuals have said, what these individuals would attempt to do, you best pray. Because some of them, they're going to need a prayer of God for if they put their mouth on you in the name of Jesus. Meaning if they try to slander you in the public eye, they try to do whatever it is. They going to need to come back to you and apologize. Remember the book of Job. And you're going to have to pray for these individuals. Hear me what I'm saying. For if they speak against what God is doing, God's going to give them a slap upside their head and they better pray. <laughs> because that scripture talked about if he didn't stop doing what he was doing, he won't die. And he was going to need Abraham to pray for him to make sure that he didn't die. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me put that out there like that. Because there are going to be people that are going to want to slander your name. And it's going to be bad for them. Okay. People, people, even people that were associated with your spouse to try to get him to slander your name. Because he didn't understand what God was doing during that season. Do you understand? I hope I'm, I'm making sense here. So, what you are birthing, people going to try to put their mouth on. And just like I just told you, the accusation may potentially attempt to come. But the prayer that I just told you about, you need to pray that these doors would be shut, that these assignments would be canceled. Tiffany was talking about in one of her words recently that why would you sit up there, get a house, Get the house furnished and not put in a security system. Don't stop praying because you got it. Keep praying now that you got it. Okay? Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep covering that thing in the name of Jesus. Because as you are birthing, being birthed into this promised land, the Magi, the three wise men, didn't get to Jesus the day that he was born. They if you read it, it reads like they did. No, they did not. It was, it took them several months to get to him, if not over here. There is a blessing of inheritance that's going to come to you because when they blessed Jesus, the myrrh, the gold, and the frankincense, if you added it up to the equivalent of today's financial income, 
that man was literally given a trust. God is releasing a retroactive blessing into your life in the name of Jesus. And this made me hesitant to release this word because of the fact that I'm about to tell you, think about a lottery. You know that when a person wins the lottery, they have the ability to cash out all the money or they can choose to receive payments bi-yearly for the extent of their lifetime. Same thing with, uh, what's the name? Uh, Publisher's Clearinghouse. God is putting a generational blessing on you and your family, okay? That this blessing, when it is released, that it is going to be a financial trusted inheritance that will be poured upon you and your family. And the Lord's taking me to Deuteronomy 28. Hold on one second. Not Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Okay, Deuteronomy 28. You shall be blessed in your cities, you shall be blessed in your fields, you shall be blessed in the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your beast, the increase of your cattle, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall your baskets and your kneading bowls be. Blessed shall you be when you come in and when you go out. There's a specific version that talks about that you shall be blessed to all of your generations and assets. That might be what version? Message version? I'm not sure. You about to be so blessed that God's going to release inherited amounts of money that's supposed to bless and cover everything that you're supposed to put your hands to from now until the end of your life and therefore that as you retroactively will be released over your children's lives so you are going to have to cover those babies because those babies the anointing that's going to come over them for what they're called to do that when the inheritance touches their life meaning when they get old enough to be able to receive what it is. You're going to have to rear them up. Show them what God has shown you. That they're supposed to do. And then. Lead, guide, cover, bless. Talk to them. Just cover them. I did a word. It was an eight part word. When I talked about the journey. The last four parts. I talk about the breakdown of what happens. When the children. Meaning you got to pray over the children. You got to pray over their spouses. You got to make sure that when you're praying over those children, that you're praying for their partners because the partner that's supposed to attach to them is the ones that are going to help carry the anointing and the wealth of y'all's family. I'm always reminded of a YouTuber named Erin on demand. And she said something and in her saying what she said, she said that she's never known turmoil in her life. Because the blessing of God was on her, her whole life. She knows that she's blessed and her children are blessed because of what her parents did. She never saw the turmoil that her parents saw. This is what you're supposed to do for your children. The blessing will be exceedingly greater than what you could ask for or think. There for that it is going to be poured out generation after generation as needed throughout time because your family will be blessed and the enemy is going to constantly be trying to align them because if he can't get you to come into agreement with generational curses if you don't cover those kids and teach them the ways of the word so that they will know about how the enemy works to try to break these curses or shall I say blessings in order to reinstate the curses. This is why the book uh, Deliverance from Covenants and Curses is important because they will come in to try to hit that next generation. Revelations 12 talks about the woman. She gives birth to the child. 
she's put in hiding. Then after she comes out of her 1260 days, she comes out with wings. God has to put her back into hiding for another period of time. Then when she comes out again, the enemy tries to drown her. And when he realizes he can't take her out, what does he do? He says, I'm going to go after the kids. The last part of that passage talks about him retreating to go after her children. You have to cover the children. Now, if you didn't get my entire word from um, the witch hunter, go watch the witch hunter. Okay. Go watch the witch hunter. So we already talked about, uh, Deuteronomy 28. We already talked about the things there. The things that you're doing is setting up for your children. It's setting up for your children. What they're called to do property. They're supposed to steward things that they're supposed to do things that you're supposed to set up so that when your children are in their position, it's going to be easier for them. And these are the things that are going to roll over as a generational blessing to them. They just have to know at that point how to take care of it so that they don't squander it so that their children will have something. And they have to teach what you taught them to their children. Am I making sense? Because you are building it, not just for you and your spouse and the children, but for your children's children and your children's children's children. But they need the instructions because remember, Adam was given instructions by God of what to do, the knowledge, the understanding. In having that understanding, he's got to be able to lead the next generation. This is why the world tries to destroy the father figure. And this is also depicted in the movie. Uh, Breaking Dawn. Go, go watch that playlist, please. So lastly, as I am finishing this up, I'm going to bring to you the warning. I've read this before, I think almost two or three times from Deuteronomy 11. We already in Deuteronomy. Lord, you want me to read the NLT first? Let me do the NLT version of... The scripture that I just read um, of Isaiah 49. And then I'm going to do Deuteronomy 11. And then we'll be done. We've been here almost two hours. This is why I wanted to record this instead of, um, whatchamacallit, uh, doing a video. Because I could record it straight in one shot as an audio. And we'll see how we display it for the video because I got some ideas. So, Isaiah 49. This was the decree. I'm reading it again, but I'm reading it in the NLT version. Okay. The Lord servant commissioned. Listen to me. All you In distant lands, pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth. From within the womb, he called me by name. He made my words of judgment as a shape, as a sharp, as a sword. And he has hidden in the shadows of his land that I am like a sharp arrow in his quiver. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, and you will bring me glory. I replied, but my work seems so useless. I have spent my strength for nothing and to no purpose. That's the way we have felt. Yet I leave it all in the Lord's hands. I will trust God for my reward and Now the Lord speak that one who formed me in my mother's womb 
be his servant who commissioned me to bring Israel back to him. The Lord has honored me and my God has given me strength. He said, you will do more than restore the people of Israel to me. I will make you a light in the Gentiles. You will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. And the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says to the one who despised and rejected by the nations, to the one who is the servant ruler, kings will stand at attention when you pass by. Princes will also bow low because the Lord, the faithful one, the holy one of Israel, who has chosen you, promises of Israel's restoration. This is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give to you the people as my covenant with them. Though you, I will, through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign to its own people again I will say to the prisoners come out in freedom to those in darkness come out in the light they will be my sheep grazing in the green pastures on the hill that were previously bare they will neither hunger nor thirst the searing sun will not reach them any more for the Lord in his mercy will lead them and he will lead them beside cool waters and I will make mountains into level plains for them. The highways will be risen above the valley and see my people will return from far away from lands to the north and west and from as far south as Egypt. Sing for joy, O heavens, rejoice, O earth. Burst into song, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on them in their suffering. Ye Jerusalem, says the Lord, his desire, the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. Never can a mother forgive her nursing child. Can she feel no love for the children she has borne? But even in that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Always in my mind, in a picture of Jerusalem's walls in ruins. Soon your descendants will come back and all who are trying to destroy you will go away. Look around you, see, for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, they will be the jewels or bridal ornaments for you to display. Even the most desolate parts of your abandoned land soon be crowned with your people. Your enemies who enslaved you will be far away. The generations born in exile will return and say, we need more room. It's crowded here. Then you will think to yourself, who has given me all these descendants? For most of my children were killed and the rest were carried away into exile. I was left here all alone. When did these people come from? Who bore these children? Who raised them for me? This is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I have given a signal to the good, godless nation. They will carry your little sons back to you in their arms. They will bring your daughters on their shoulders. Kings and queens will serve you and care for your needs. 
they will bow to the earth before you, lick the dust from your feet. Then you will know that I am Lord. Those who trust in me will never be able to put you to shame. Who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of the warrior who can demand the tyrant let his captives go. But the Lord says the captive warriors will be released and plunder of tyrants will be retrieved. For I will fight those who fight you and I will save your children. I will feed your enemies with their own flesh and they will be drunk with rivers of their own blood. All the world will know that the Lord am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Almighty One of Israel. But the warning to you is this. That was the warning to your enemies, but this is the warning to you. You must love the Lord your God and always obey his requirement and decrees, regulations, and commands. Keep in mind that I am not talking now to your children who have never experienced the discipline of your God or seen the greatness of his strong hand and powerful arm. They didn't see the miraculous sign and the wonder he performed in Egypt against Pharaoh, all his land. They didn't see what the Lord did to the armies of Egypt, to their horses, their chariots, how he drowned them in the sea as they were chasing you. He destroyed them and they have not recovered to this day. The children didn't see how the Lord cared for you in the wilderness until you arrived here. They didn't see what he did. Uh, Dharma and Abram, the sons of Abel and Reuben, descendants of Reuben, when the earth opened and its mouth and the Israel camp was swallowed them among with their households and the tents, even living things and belonged to them. But you have seen the Lord perform all these mighty deeds with your own eyes, blessings of your obedience. So therefore, be careful to obey every command I have given you today. So you may have strength to go in and take over the land you are about to enter. If you obey, you enjoy a long life in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors to you. Therefore, their descendants and the land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are about to enter and take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you plant your seed and made a Egrician ditches? I don't know. With your foot as a vegetable garden, rather the land you will soon take over is a land of hills and valleys with plenty rain, a land that the Lord God cares for. He watches over it through each season of the year. If you carefully obey the commands I am giving you today, if you love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and soul, and then he will send the rain to prosper in this season, the early and the late rains, so that you can bring in your harvest of grain, new wine, olive oil. He will give you lush pasture lands and your livestock and yourselves will have all you want to eat. But be careful. Don't let your hearts be deceived away from the Lord to serve and worship other gods. If you do, the Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut up the sky Hold back the rain and the ground will fall and fail to produce harvest. 
then you will quickly die in the good land, the land he's given you. So commit yourself wholeheartedly to these words of mine, tie them in your hands, wear them on your forehead as a reminder, teach them to your children, talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Write them in your doorpost for your household on your gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth and your children may flourish in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Be careful to obey all these commands I've given you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in his ways and holding tightly to him. Then the Lord will drive out all the nations ahead of you, though they are much greater and stronger than you and will take over their land. Wherever you set foot, the land will be yours. Your frontiers will stretch from the wilderness in the south of Lebanon, in the north from the Euphrates River, in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you, for the Lord your God will cause the people to fear and dread you as he promised. Whenever you go out in the whole land, look today, I'm giving you a choice between a blessing and a curse. You will be blessed. If you obey and the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, but you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord of your God and turn away from him and worship gods you have not be known before. When the Lord your God brings you into the land and helps you take possession of it, you must Pronounce the blessing at Mount Gerizim. I don't know what that is. And the curse at Mount Ebal. These two mountains are west of the Jordan River in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Jordan Valley near the town of Galgal, not far from the Oak of Morat. For you are about to cross the Jordan River to take over the land the Lord your God has given you. When you take that land and are living in it, you must be careful to be obey all the decrees and regulations I'm giving you today. And it's funny, I saw 115 a moment ago. 115 is Philemon 115. I took it away for a little while so that when I returned it to you, it will be forever. That is the blessing. Some of you went into a season where God gave you a taste and see of what that blessing was going to look like when you received it. But he took it away from you for your dry season while he was trying to deal with all of that other stuff. And now that blessing I just read over you is what he's returning back. It's coming back in its fullness. So that is the entire word that the Lord gave me. That's everything that he desired for you to know for 2024. So there are some things that are coming and I can't even express. I can't what God has shown me. But be prepared. I can't even say it. I'm going to wait until the Lord gives me release to say it. But just know things are coming in 2024 for you guys. Stay up to date. The podcast is there. For those of y'all that haven't been watching, listening to the podcast, there is an actual podcast podcast. It's on Spotify. Tajma. God. Uh, Tajma. Journey to God to me is what it's called. Go check that out. 
I talk about kingdom marriage. I talk about everything out there. I even talk about spiritual warfare and stuff like that. Go check that out. But we're going to be also talking about some other things that the Lord has put on my spirit that is definitely a necessity, especially for those of y'all that are standing for kingdom marriage. So much is coming this year. Uh, I don't know how he's going to depict it and how he wants me to do it right now. But I know that he's been speaking to me in some about some specific things and we will see how this plays out. But I'm not going to reveal to you what it is until timing. <laughs> God has a timing for everything. All right. So. I hope this has blessed you. We've been here for two whole hours. I'm going to let you digest everything I just said. Let the Lord speak to you through it. And I hope it bless you. Until next time, this is Tajma. Much love, faith, peace, and blessings to you. Bye.